Compared to the last video where I covered the RTX 5070 from Palette, today we're going to talk about a bit of a comparison because we have right here MSI GeForce RTX 5080. This is Gaming Trio OC and I'm going to compare it to my old and regular uh, MSI GeForce RTX 4080 Super Gaming X Trio. Now, of course, we're going to go with a bit of a synthetic benchmarks, but then again, some old games, some new games, some remastered games. And of course, there will be some games that have DLSS on or DLSS off and compare four basically different benchmarks, two with 5080 and two with 4080 Super. Now, regarding all those information specifications regarding the RTX 5080, you already know everything about that so I'm not going to dwell into that and give you uh, that information because it's a simple Google uh, RTX 5080 specifications right but regardless of that just in case I'll if you want to see that information I'll link it down directly to the MSI GeForce RTX 5080 uh, gaming uh, trio so you can grab that information but just to point out some quick uh, information this card right here the 5080 has 16 gigs of GDDR7 we're having uh, key features like dedicated ray tracing cores, uh, tensor cores, NVIDIA DLSS, game ready and NVIDIA, uh, studio drivers, NVIDIA app, broadcast and G-Sync. So what you have here is um, an AI enhanced voice and video, AI accelerated performance with NVIDIA DLSS and uh, yeah, that's about it. But regarding the GPU specifically, uh, I. I'm not going to show you in graphs the thermals, but what I can say in general, what I noticed, the RTX uh, 4080 Super in general and throughout all my benchmarks went from 66 to 71, 72, depending on the case. So I would say that 67 was in majority of the benchmarks. This one right here is surprisingly one slot thinner and it goes up to 57 degrees. And I think that's quite outstanding when you go into that segment. Now let's jump into the games and benchmarks and all everything all together, just so you can see the difference, even though you already saw that, but let's go with the benchmarks, uh, with synthetic benchmarks, gaming benchmarks, and just to go through the whole build, I gave the GPUs some breathing room. So I'm using AMD Ryzen 9 9950X 3D. Uh, we have Kingston Fury Renegade uh, DDR5 RGB 2x16 and 6400 megahertz. As you know, higher clock speed on RAMs doesn't uh, do much of a performance boost uh, when we're talking about AMD. Then we have the Assassin 4 Vapor Chamber Vision cooling down the processor and we have uh, Deep Cool's CG580 the board that I'm using is uh, MSI MPG X870E Carbon Wi-Fi. So let's start with the benchmarks. Uh, 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme, and this is the only Time Spy that I tested. Score is 4D RTX 4080 Super 13,592. And when you compare it with Time Spy Extreme for 4080, we have 15,113. But the most interesting thing, because you can see that the CPU is quite similar logical right but then we have the gpu difference and you get 2000 points more so that's 13781 compared to 15735 then we go with still nomad and this is the first time i'm actually using this benchmark in general the score is uh, well basically again almost 2000 points difference 6620 6, compared to 8530 and the FPS is 66.21 compared to 85.31. I think everything is said here. Now I have two, three games, three games basically that don't have DLSS. So just to give you some raw performance, uh, Deus Ex uh, Mankind Divided, we have averages 105.5 FPS min minimum is 73.2 and the maximum is 133.7 for the RTX 4080 Super. If we go with RTX 5080, average is 119.6, minimum is 99 and the maximum is 148.5. Then we go for Honor overall FPS count, minimum for the RTX 4080 Super is 47.52, average is 147.88 and the maximum is 213.57 while for RTX 5080 we have 59.95 at the minimum average is 172.27 and maximum is 248.98 
and finally PUBG. For the RTX 4080 Super we have minimum at 17, maximum at 330 and the average is 87, while for the RTX 5080 we have minimum at 27, maximum at 392 and average is 135. So when we take raw performance in consideration, of course you get an advantage on RTX 5080, but as you notice in each generational gap, going from uh, 9080, 1080 Ti, uh, 2080, 3080, 4080 and similar stuff, each new generation has a smaller percentage of an advantage compared to the raw performance. So we had loads of generational gap like 30% from 1980 to 1080. Then we have 2080 at 20-30%. Then we had 3080, which was somewhere around 20%, and it just kind of lowers down as the GPUs go in advance. I don't know what's going on here, but I would really appreciate, and I think you guys would as well, if we had much higher gaps between the generations, because then we will see some progress. Now, with the RTX 5080, and you'll see what I'm talking about, when you turn on the DLSS and you use Ultra Performance. So let's start with Shadow of Tomb Raider. With RTX 4080 Super, DLSS on compared to off is 166 to 68 when we're talking about minimum FPS. Maximum FPS is 353 compared to 141. Average 215 to 87 and 95% is 174 compared to 71. When you go and compare that to RTX 5080, 78 with off and on is 203. We're already 40 FPS higher than the RTX 4080 Super. Then we have maximum at 164 compared to the LSS on 395. Average is 99 compared to 251 and 95% is 80 to 211. So when you take RTX 5080 with the LSS on, with ultra performance, let's go with average, 251. Then we go with RTX 4080 Super, the LSS on is 215, but with off is 87. Now this is the generational gap that you get, but honestly, in my opinion, and I think in everybody else's opinion, you would like to see raw performance, right? And that difference is 12 FPS. So that's a bit too low, but still, if you have DLSS, why not just turn it on? Use that advantage, what they did, and take that into consideration. I mean, it would be much appreciated because when you take a look, DLSS on, specifically in Shadow of Tomb Raider, you get 215 compared to 251. So it's still not that high when we're talking about generational gap and when we're talking about uh, percentage in advantage. Now, let's go for further. Now when we go with Hogwarts Legacy, and I'm gonna go with RTX 4080 Super first, DLSS off compared to on, 54 in average compared to 93, 16 to 18 in minimum, maximum is 116 to 157, and 1% is 26 to 33. RTX 5080's average with uh, DLSS off, 54 compared to 97. Minimum is 18 to 18, that didn't change much, but the maximum is 110 to 168, and then we have 1%, 28 to 36. You see, you still have a difference. A much, much smaller, 11, uh, 11 FPS difference in maximum, and on average we have 4 FPS difference. But when you compare DLSS, I mean, you can turn on DLSS on RTX 4080 Super. So in Hogwarts Legacy, you do get a couple of FPS more, the average is above 60 on both so yeah that didn't change much and didn't go as planned but let's go with spider-man miles morales now here we have a much greater difference uh dlss off compared to on rtx 50 4080 super minimum is 34 compared to 62 then we have maximum is 135 compared to 213 and average is 183 compared to 138 when we go with 5080 40 265, 247 to 260, and 110 compared to 150. So the average here is again 12 FPS, but you can see the maximum is quite high with 47 FPS difference. So again, not that much, not that much. We do get some maybe 5% of difference and advantage, and that's it. Now let's go further with uh, Spider Man um, Remastered. 
DLSS off compared to on. We have 36 compared to 61 when we're talking about the RTX 4080 Super. 141, 232, and 67, 166 on average. When we go with 5080, 40 to 72, 108 uh, with maximum to 255, and average 77 to 173. Again, there's like 7 FPS difference in average. And uh, okay, we have 23 difference in maximum, but uh, the minimum is 11. So it doesn't, again, same story happening here. Witcher 3 DLSS off compared to on RTX uh, 4080 Super. We have 22 to 37. 66 in maximum to 20, 128 and average is 30 to 81. Then we go with RTX 5080. Minimum is 25 with DLSS off. On is 27. Maximum is 67 compared to 166 and average is 38 to 100. In Witcher 3, we actually do get quite, well, I would say 19 FPS, which is in this scenario 20% which is quite all right, I would say, and that is continuing on the generational gap and everything that I was mentioning earlier. But when you take all the games earlier, it's 5 to 10% advantage with DLSS on. Now let's go with something newer in the gaming department, and I'm going to go with Cyberpunk 2077, and just going to stick with this game, because I think all other games in this scenario will benefit the same way. So what we have here is... I'm going to go with DLSS off, ray tracing off, and then we're going to have another one with DLSS off and ray tracing on. So if we go with DLSS off and ray tracing off, we have the maximum at 75 and the average at 51. But when we go with DLSS off and ray tracing on with path tracing as well, we have maximum at 45 FPS and average is 11 FPS. Of course, this is... Uh, you can see the difference in visual aspect when we're talking about that because ray tracing and path tracing gives that more visual aspect. But here we have something that you can see which generates much more visually demanding uh, raw power without a doubt. And then we go with something else that you haven't seen so far in the past games that I showed you. So we have 4K ultra details, DLSS super resolution with ultra performance, and we're gonna go with DLSS frame generation two with ray tracing and path tracing. So with DLSS frame generation times two, we have maximum at 220 FPS, and average of 131. When you compare this to the DLSS off, but with ray tracing off as well, you get a boost of 60 FPS, which is brilliant, but we'll get to the conclusion later on. Then we go with DLSS frame generation three times, and of course, with ray tracing and path tracing on, you get maximum of, I don't know, the, the, the FPS counter didn't show the last number, so I was kind of guessing the last number, but it was in thousands, so 2416 at the maximum FPS. But I think this, as, as you can see, I don't have anywhere here the minimum FPS because it picked up from the menu. And going from the menu to the game, it kind of generated the wrong FPS in that minimum. So it could be a higher average, and the minimum is always at 1 FPS, just because of that initial start. But regardless of that, we have average at 261 FPS, and that's outstanding. But you do get slight latency, really minimal latency. But this will come into a conclusion later on, which you will get the idea what I'm getting at. And then we go with DLSS frame generation 4. We also have somewhere in thousands for the maximum FPS in Cyberpunk 2077, but the average is also higher, 362. Of course, this all depends on the position where you're in the game, what you're doing exactly, in what part of the game are you. I was literally somewhere at the beginning doing the same thing just to give more accuracy when comparing uh, DLSS uh, frame generation times two, times three, and times four. But we have 362. And of course, latency is again a bit higher. What happens here? In games that are like Cyberpunk 2077 and that support DLSS frame generation, they will definitely benefit on this part. 
but when you go with something that is more on FPS where latency is crucial, I mean, you're going with mouse and keyboard that have the lowest latency, uh, higher pulling rate and everything all together. When you combine all of that and then you get the latency inside the game, that might not benefit you in that sense because you're into competitive gaming. But in this type of games where you're just doing some adventures or anything similar to that, you will definitely benefit. Of course, when we add ray tracing and path tracing. So for some of you guys, it might look really outstanding and brilliant, but then for some of you, it might bother you. So you just have to tweak around those settings to get the perfect thing. Maybe not all of you will want to have 362 frames per second, but it all depends on the GPU that you're buying. And this is where this generation benefits. But for the raw power, you've seen the benchmarks, you've seen everything that I've shown you regarding the 4080 and 5080. And unfortunately, 4080 Super doesn't have the support for the LSS frame generation. So that kind of goes into that segment. But regardless of that, this is what we get regarding the DLSS super resolution with ultra performance, DLSS frame generation with ray tracing and path tracing in 4K ultra with 5080. It's insane for you guys, as I stated, that love to play with uh, these type of games that I've shown you, but in general, you know what I'm trying to say. So in that sense, I didn't go with any other graphic cards to test out, but uh, it would be much uh, more interesting, unfortunately, I really wanted to compare these two because these two are in the same bracket of each generation. So RTX, for, okay, 4080, but we have 4080 Super and they will have most likely 5080 Super. I'm just guessing now, of course, but most likely in some future we'll have 5080 Super or anything similar to that, which will, okay, in that scenario will be much more consistent when we're taking the comparison with the each generational GPU in that segment. But in this scenario, you're getting a, well, basically a couple of FPS difference. When we take RTX 4080 Super currently in the price, I think it's around 900 to 1000 euros. And the RTX 5080, what I managed to find is around 1300 euros. So there is a slight price increase. It's not pumped up like it was at the, at the actual launch, but it's a solid price tag and you still get some advantage. Not drastical, unfortunately. When we take basically into consideration the raw performance, you can see that it has that raw performance when we go into synthetic benchmarks. And when you go with other games that are like Deus Ex For Honor, which are much older games, and then we go with PUBG, there you can see some difference quite a lot. Basically in PUBG, you see a lot on average, it's like almost 50 FPS, but yeah. It's it's something that you either follow the trend if you're into that, uh, if you have those possibilities to upgrade each generation so you can sell the past card for a normal price so you don't lose much. But in general, if you have a stronger card, then I think you'll be satisfied with that and you wouldn't be able to or need, have the need to upgrade. But if you're just in that segment where you're looking at, you're having RTX 3000 series or you're having anything older than that, and then the generational gap will make much more sense going with this. But I really wanted to compare these two to give you some idea about these two generations, which would make uh, some sort of an idea sense. And uh, well, you know, it's uh, just something uh, that I really wanted to do and to give you an idea how it works, specifically with 9950X3D, because it's the best uh, gaming processor currently. And basically you can definitely do much, much more with that one. And I wanted to give these both GPUs breathing room. So yeah, that's it. That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you got some ideas uh, about the performance in general and um, some insights more or you already know that. So yeah, that's uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, just in case you decide to go in any direction, I'll put the links in the description that uh, might help you give you more ideas, specifically with the RTX and all those details that I mentioned regarding the NVIDIA and GeForce and RTX and all the specifications, and specifically where to grab if you can find the RTX 5080. Thanks for watching today's video. Hope I shine a light a bit on it. And of course, don't forget to start the conversation down in the comment section, as well as subscribe, hit the like button, click the notification bell, and I'll see you quite soon in another one. Bye-bye.